In Mount Shasta, California, Roseburg Forest Products integrates the many facets of its operation through its GIS system. The GMS2 is revolutionizing their work. This particular division of Roseburg's operation is about 285,000 acres of mixed conifer. We uh, harvest somewhere between uh, 60 and 70 million board feet a year. The field work is typically the beginning of the GIS work and the GMS is going to be indispensable with regard to that work. In the past, the way we have put the roads and the streams and the property lines on the map, it's been by just drawing it in by hand uh, with a good educated guess. Many of our harvest units are keyed to the roads and the roads serve as boundaries. So if you don't get your roads right, your harvest units aren't going to be right either. The harvest units may be in excess of, of $20,000 per acre. The miscalculation of an acre is, is a fairly significant event that you don't want to occur. Our base layer is not as accurate as it needs to be to build everything else off of it. And those, the layers I'm talking about are property lines, roads, and water courses. Those are our primary layers that everything else in, in forest management is built off of. These green lines are harvest unit boundaries. You know, this is where the unit actually ended up being flagged, and you can tell that because that's where it got logged. This is what we actually got back on our paper maps. We now have inventory and data collected based on what the GIS is showing here, and it's not right. Now we would have to adjust all of our inventory so you can see how not having to accurately map the first time can really impact the whole chain of events that happens afterwards. I've been really wanting an accurate GI or GPS unit because I get that precision and I can trust that precision every single time. With the GMS2, I'm able to get a fix in some of the, the worst of conditions within, you know, easily within 10 feet in many cases to within a foot. I, I would imagine due to the use of the GLONASS satellites. And once we have those uh, points located into the GPS, then we'll go back to the office, download those, make the corrections into the base map if we have to, and accurately record the shape of harvest units. At the very minimum, the THP field foresters who initiate a lot of the work, uh, each one of those would, would definitely need to have one. The four segments of our operation uh, planning, uh, environmental operations, and acquisitions. It's uh, the GMS2 is going to be able to help those people uh, a tremendous amount. My job is to to basically make sure all the environmental uh, requirements that we have are fulfilled before the guys go in and, and set up their timber harvest plans, and we start cutting trees. The state has a database with UTM coordinates for lots of different species. I can download that information to the GMS2 walk right out to the woods, walk pretty much right to that spot. The first thing we did this morning was set up a camera station for forest carnivores. We went out, found a survey point, and put up a remote triggered camera. When an animal comes in to check the bait, it triggers a camera. In terms of data collection, the ability to store text with a location is great. Um, the other thing that, that I think is really handy is, is having an actual digital location tagged to the photos. You know exactly where that photo was taken. You have everything together, you download it, you have your spatial data, you have your attributes that go with that data. And you get back to the office and a lot of that stuff is already entered in. Download it to the computer and you're done. Our company-wide GIS is, is housed here in California. We have our environmental layers. Um, that entails a lot of endangered species work, primarily spotted owls. We've got a layer for each species that we keep current. A lot of times in a, in a stream, the smaller they get, the harder it is to figure out where the fish line is, where we have fish and where we don't. With the electric fisher, um, each time we get a fish, we put that in the GPS. Eventually we'll get to a point where we don't get any more fish. Um, so rather than then having to backtrack to where we think, think we caught the last fish, we already have that in the GPS and we can hike out and we're done. The GMS2, I can build my attribute tables here on the computer. I can load them up to the unit and they are now in there for whoever grabs that unit. And they don't need to memorize you know, all the codes that I have in the GIS and all the attributes that I use. They're, they're in there. They're ready to go. That is huge. And then another one is the image, being able to take a picture of a crossing 
and bring it in. I can hyperlink that in the GIS so that you can click on a point and pull up an image. One of the, the major features is the integration of the database and the imaging with the GMS2. It's just not a, not a GPS data collector, it's, it's so much more. Quite frankly, uh, as I've started to use this, it, I, I keep thinking of new ways to use it every day. So in, in, in that respect, it's been, uh, it's been something that we've really wanted to have. I think it's going to impact the company in just about every department, in the police and the forest management, one on each desk, <laughs> you know. I mean, I think if once people get comfortable using it, I don't see a single department that wouldn't be able to use the GMS2. <laughs> that's as simple as it is. Yeah.